once I spoke to um, our principal, they, we came up with the idea and we sent a letter out to our community, um, inviting interest to see whether there would be any students who wanted to be part of our pilot program, which was one year nine class. From there, we they went into year 10, we had two the next year, and then we went to five the third year, and this year we're full BYOD. How we um, ran it with our staff is we went with five champions to start with from our key learning areas, and they were just people who were wanting to put their hands up and said, let's give it a go. Um, and they are probably our true innovators, so that sort of helped. Um, and from there, they were the ones who then needed to lead the rest of their faculty around growing some of that, what was happening, and, and show them the way and all of it. So in, at the start of 2015, we made the decision to go fully BYOD. So we actually had quite a small trial to start with. And a big thing was there was just a huge need out there. We actually could no longer um, provide the computer rooms for students to do that because we were growing um, e-learning within our school. There was nationally, there was the whole thing with coming in with um, students need to have online exams in the future. Um, so we were then torn about, well, our juniors need to be BYOD and working in an e-learning environment because that's something that they're going to be having to do over the next five years. Um, from an external point of view, but our seniors are actually needing it now. So therefore, we cannot, couldn't just say, well, let's not grow at a small rate, let's actually go full hog and get all our staff on board. And from there, it was like, well, let's right at the start of 2015 say, everyone has to do it. We're signaling it now. This hasn't been a hidden process. We know that these trials have been going on. So therefore, we had to put in place all the things that we needed to do in one year to get all our staff teaching fully BYOD in a year um, from our small st sample of about 20 at that stage. So a big thing for us with change was making sure all the processes were in place and making sure that everything was visible. So we had a document put up, so everything, the decision we were making, we made that visible to the staff. So if we discussed something, it went there, this is our timeline. We had staff meetings, they said these are our concerns, we went away and said well these are our decisions, that's there, this was in place. And some of those things that we'd actually come up with but we needed to make sure that they knew that was there so staff felt that they were coming on board as well and, and that things were being put in place and it wasn't just they don't know what they're doing, they do know what they're doing. Well, we have about 150 staff so this is quite a huge change from about 20 after our small growth to get there. And of course we were focusing just on our key learning, the areas around the science faculties and our maths faculties. We are a faculty based school and we also had to get those other areas where um, on board as well for teachers who hadn't been working in the BYD environment whatsoever. How we did this was a number of ways. We have um, late state start options and by that I mean um, twice a term. We get students to come in at 10.30 um, and within those we have choice for staff. So they are able to go, depending on their area of need, they choose to do that. They could go to that same thing five, six times throughout the year and really work on it depending on what their pace is. Some staff managed to get things just like that and we needed to make sure when those late starts that we were offering new stuff so that they could keep um, progressing as well. So not everyone was at the same um, level at the same time, so we're offering that. Um, one of the things we have is these ICT learning progressions as well that staff could self-assess. So they always had some goals that they could work to um, and I should say that these goals were also linked to our strategic goals so we had them there um, so that they can, everything was sort of one step related to each other. One of the things about leading change I think is making sure that your decisions are visible because that's how you get everyone else on board. Nobody likes to have those decisions made and behind closed doors. If you make it visible and actually respond to concerns and things as you're going and say that yes, we have made these decisions based on these sound principles and these are the reasons why, people are very happy or much happier to get on board with what that is.